Well, we've been expecting it and it's here. Winter has finally hit up in Alaska. The rivers and the lakes, they're freezing up. There's a blanket of snow on the ground. It may seem like we're procrastinating with our winter chores, but I assure you, we have been extremely busy. Some of this stuff is just getting pushed off, I would say. And winter actually has been getting pushed off. I feel like we've had a couple extra weeks of just nice enough weather that we can get our work done. And when it comes to winter and prepping for winter, I think the most important thing is having a good firewood supply. That's what we're getting started with. We've got our work cut out for us the next couple of days. Where do you want to put stuff like this? All right, let's get down to business. making some major progress thanks to this lovely dual log splitter that our neighbor lent us. He enjoys eggs and spuds, so that's our trade. And we have this all day, which is really helpful because we are splitting birch primarily. This is the first year that Eric and I have had this much birch. There were some gracious folks that were developing a property and had a lot of downed birch. So Eric and I just had to go and cut it and collect it. And it's just awesome to have it because it is night and day. It burns so much longer, so much more 
efficient, I guess you could say. Some of it has probably been sitting out for a summer or two and we have had really wet weather. So not all of it is in perfect condition, but again, we can't complain because our woodshed is gonna be half full with birch. So that's awesome. So yeah, everything's frozen. Our strategy for this year is a little bit different. What we're doing is Ariel is splitting and she's tossing them into the woodshed. And so the pile doesn't get so huge. I'm coming in here and I'm stacking them as she's splitting. I think in years past, what we did is we both just work on the splitter and get this huge pile of wood. And then it would start getting kind of far from the woodshed. This way is working out awesome. We're also splitting our pieces a little bit bigger this year. We're doing that for a few different reasons. Our wood stove's huge, so you could fit big pieces in there. The bigger the piece, the longer it's gonna burn. And also the spruce that we're burning, which we have already split and we're gonna split some more, that's really starting to get rotten and it's not burning as well. So the bigger chunks are gonna help us out on that. We're hoping to get all the birch split tonight, but I always forget how much hard work goes into splitting and stacking wood. So it's taking a while out here. about it, I feel like. I'm not was... nervous, you just didn't want it to be covered in snow, right? Not just that, we have like, we got a couple more things to do after all this wood, so it's like, ah, oh, I want to try to get as much done as we can before winter. It was really unfortunate.
keeping things interesting this morning a little competition splitting maul by hand versus the log splitter i'm going to be using the splitting maul we have four birch rounds they're all about the same size we're going to see how long it takes to split four of them we're going to be splitting them in four pieces or quarters splitting maul versus log splitter good way to start off the morning mark good sight go I don't know the time, but it's on the time. It's quite really easy because it was frozen. Um, try to give me like the, the like a competitive edge. No, babe. You're just acting like it's fair and square. Listen, I only got a dual action log splitter. Would you feel good if I like uh, took it easy on you? Yes, I would feel good. I <laughs> would feel good. I feel like you take it too seriously. Did you see you? You like. <laughs> Well, I guess this isn't going to be fun. Eric takes his competition pretty seriously, so I have to be a minute and 20 seconds, which I don't even think that's even possible. So let's get, let's get this machine fired up and get started. <laughs> Right, well, I haven't had my coffee, so I don't think that was super fair. No, Eric is definitely faster. I think mine was two minutes and 40 seconds. This thing wasn't moving as quick as I had hoped this morning. And I think it's settled that Eric's just gonna be doing it from hand, by hand from now on. So no joking aside, we actually have a lot more wood to cut. That was the last of our birch. So we have our birch in the back because it needs to dry. And then we have a bunch of spruce that's in smaller rounds, so a lot of that we can just stack and then some of it we're going to be splitting. And then we have a whole nother trailer load of wood too that we have to get put away today.
right? We made short work of this wood job this morning. It's hard to believe we got those two big piles that we had chopped and put away. We had the trailer and we also had a huge pile just sitting like in front of the garden. And so that's how Eric and I usually do our wood. We'll collect it throughout the year and then we'll have one big party where we chop all of it and stack it. This wood shed has served us great. It probably fits seven cords or so. We don't have any extra this year, so we don't have any stacked on the front, but we do have a lot of that birch, which is awesome because it does burn longer. All of that is behind this row and that has really good air gaps. We wanted to be able to let it kind of get good airflow and dry out. Things are looking good. We are going to actually be pulling from this side this year and we'll probably get all the way through it into winter. We usually burn maybe like four, maybe five cords. I'm talking an entire year since we do burn sometimes in the summer. So this is, I mean, like I said, again, we usually go through about one and a half sides of this woodshed in a whole year. We're gonna finish off this firewood job with a little echo, give her a quick sharpening, topping off the bar oil and the gas. And we gotta cut up the last thing that I don't really like cutting for some reason for me, it's just kind of hard to get organized and cut it all. And that's all the leftover slab pieces from the sawmill. So let's go get her done. Oh my God, where are you gonna start? What end? Where do you always start? Right at the tip. sweat. <sighs> Are you Jackie Chan? Oh look at they got a superpower. I got You're Spider-Man. Smoke coming out of my head. You're hands. what's his name? Peter? Huh? Peter? That's it. Two days of extremely hard work. Actually probably only like a day and a half. We got our fill of wood for the winter. We're dead tired. I'm going inside and start a fire. It's cold out here. I think we're gonna make some Something good for dinner. <laughs> I'm not even gonna cut that piece of wood. It's got like gravel embedded in it. It keeps doling the saw. getting started on dinner. I'm very excited for it. We are making tomb, which is a Lebanese garlic condiment or sauce or paste, and it uses raw garlic. We were turned on to this, so we wanted to try it. Eric and I love garlic, but we've never tried a lot of dishes with raw garlic, and this uses a lot of it. We're going to get a whole bunch of cloves cut up about one cup's worth. I'm gonna mince it super fine, and then we're gonna add just a few other simple ingredients. Oh, 
not sure whose idea it was to make such an elaborate recipe <laughs> tonight, but that took about 10 minutes of chopping. And if you have a food processor, this would be the time to utilize it. We used our mussels. So <laughs> that's done. I think that's well over a cup. It is really fresh garlic. It's probably only a month old or so. So it's very pungent. I'm excited to see how this recipe is going to taste. You're probably wondering why I'm chopping it up so fine. And that is because it is a similar process to like mayonnaise where you emulsify like an egg with oil. In this case, it's garlic with oil. So I need it to be very, very tiny, like the same consistency if you had a food processor. The oil we're using is grapeseed oil. Usually I use olive oil, but it was advised not to use that since it has such a strong flavor. So grapeseed doesn't have as strong of a flavor. We're gonna try that since it's our first time making this recipe. I'm going to add kosher salt now, probably about a teaspoon. I'm just gonna put it right on top. And this step is important from what I've read because it's kind of gonna act like a grittiness, so to speak. So we wanna make sure we have that in there now. And I'm only going to be adding a very small amount of this oil. Probably gonna use about three cups altogether, but we will see. So I'm just gonna add like a drizzle, teeny tiny amount. And we're going to use our immersion blender on low and see if we can get things kind of whipped up in here. All right, so this is gonna be a slow process. I'm just going to basically get this first mash all together. And then I'm gonna slowly add more oil and then I will incorporate a little bit of lemon juice and kind of alternate back and forth, kind of like you would mayonnaise. And we hopefully will get this beautiful, beautiful, like garlic, fluffy, whippy paste. So let's see how it turns out. <laughs> so I think this is looking just like it's supposed to. I'm adding a little bit more oil each time and then I'm like slowly adding in the lemon juice as well. This stuff is so thick and it is out of this world delicious. Make tomb if you can, because it is insane. I have a little more oil to add, probably about a cup. I'm just gonna pretty much almost dump all of it in. And the last of the lemon juice we use probably quarter cup, maybe half a cup. I used one and a half lemons. I'm a believer in this stuff. It is out of this world. I can't even describe the flavor. It is so thick. When we first started, you know, it was a little more yellow and now it's like a jiggly white substance, but it's so delicious. And Eric and I are going to be eating it on some fresh pita pits that we made with some acorn squash that we fried up. I don't think I've been thrilled about a dinner like this in forever. I mean, I'm like ecstatic. You see that? That looks amazing. We are going to eat dinner and I'm super excited that we made a bunch of this because you can freeze it and that's exactly what we're gonna be doing. We're gonna have a bunch of leftovers. We're doing some winter maintenance, or I guess winter prep on this little Honda 2200 generator. The oil to change on these is super easy. There's no drain plug, so you basically drain the oil out of where you put the oil in just by tipping it over. We've already drained out the oil on this, and the oil that is in there is this right here. It's 10W30 motor oil. And these Honda generators, for quite some time, and this is a newer model, have had a feature on them, and I guess it's a safety feature. It's kind of good, it's kind of bad. What it is, is it'll tell you if the oil is low and it'll turn off the generator and you'll have a little red light flashing on the front, which is great if you're running low on oil, you're not gonna harm the motor. But when it's not good is when it starts getting really cold, like under 10 degrees Fahrenheit, the oil in there is too thick and it's gonna think that it's low on oil because it's not moving around in there. And it'll basically tell you that it's low on oil and it'll shut off and you'll have to bring this generator inside the house and you'll kind of have to warm up the oil. So what we do is we change over the oil. The one that's in there now, I mentioned it's 10W30. So what the 10 means is the thickness or the thinness of the oil when the oil is cold. And what the 30 means is the thickness of the oil when it's warmed up. What we're gonna do is change it over. Right now I have 5W30, sometimes I'll use 0W30, but the five is the thickness of the oil when it's cold. So it's a little bit thinner. 
It's gonna kind of trick this machine into knowing that there is oil in there and it works like a charm every time. This thing, it doesn't even take a quart of oil, so we're gonna get her filled up. Just changing the oil and these little generators, where we live at least, because it gets really cold, sometimes isn't enough. We do have to add seafoam to the gas tank when it gets really cold or heat because the gas up here in Alaska gets a lot of moisture in it and a lot of water. And it, it seems like these small motors on the little generators, they're very finicky and they have a hard time running. Our other generator, which is a little bit bigger, it's a 2800 watt and it's a Kohler. That thing will burn any gas and it has absolutely no problem. So we don't have to do any winter prep to that one at all. We're over in the shelter logic and we're using this thing a little bit different this year. We're not going to be bringing the Polaris in here with the plow to keep it out of the snow. We've accumulated stuff. I don't know how, but we have a lot of stuff we're trying to keep out of the weather. So we're going to be using the shelter logic as like storage. We've brought in our scaffolding that we use to do the siding on the house. So we're using those as shelves. So we got everything kind of organized in here. The Polaris is going to be staying out or it's going to go under the little carports over there. But it is officially winter and it's a good time because we can unplug our freezer. We're not getting above freezing during the day, not even close. I think the high yesterday was like 16 degrees. It's about the same today. So we're unplugging the freezer. We no longer need to power this thing with our solar system. And last year or last season, I made the mistake of just throwing this cord on the ground in the spring or the fall. I don't know when it was, but anyways, it froze into the ground like six inches deep in ice and it took forever to get out. So I'm gonna make sure this thing's up off the ground. We should be good. And the little generator I was talking about earlier that never has any problems is right here. This is our Kohler. It did have a problem. It wasn't the generator's fault, but we run the exhaust out underneath the shelter logic and then kicked outside so you can be in here and have it running. And that exhaust got frozen in the ground and it had ice and it expanded and contracted and it broke. So we got a new piece of exhaust. I'm gonna plumb that outside so we can run this thing and Nobody gets hurt in here. This is the pipe I'm gonna be using. And this stuff, I don't know, it's it's semi-thin. The stuff we used last time, which lasted about two years with it, that I got from uh, Napa Auto Parts, um, but they're out and they haven't had it for a long time. So I had to order this off Amazon. Hopefully this stuff works. Okay, exhaust is on. Head outside. Oh, this is awesome. This thing's way longer. Okay, we'll bend it down so the snow doesn't get in there. All right, there we go. Got a nice little bend to it so the snow or rain won't get down inside there. And it's pretty easy to see. It sticks way up. Ariel comes through here with the snow blower and removes all the snow from the shelter logic. So she's got to watch out for this. But we are all good to go over at the shelter logic this year. Let's put one more down here. Man, this thing's really nice. Well, it's been getting cold actually for a while now and I've been getting lots of other stuff done. I took everything out of the carport over by the Connex and I kind of swapped everything. So I winterized the boat. I put that in the back. I took all the snow machines out, put those in the front, made sure those are all running good. We took the Polaris. We put a little bit of weight in the back of it. I put some concrete piers back there. We also installed the plow on the Polaris so it's ready for winter. We got the snow blower all fired up. She's running good. We got everything lubed on it. We got some fresh gas in the gas tank. We have a few more things to do and that's gonna be over on our pickup trucks. Damn, this thing's a lot more heavy duty than our other truck. Everything's bigger on it.
Okay, I could use a quart more. We just did our first oil change in the new Tundra. It's always a little difficult when it's your first time doing it on a certain truck. This one is very similar to the other Tundra, so I had that going for me. I'm gonna add one more quart of oil to this. We should be good to go. We also went ahead and picked up some winter tires for this truck. For some reason, this truck without the winter tires on it, I think it has like BFGs on it right now, it is very hard to drive when it gets icy. The back end on this thing just is all over the place. So we're gonna get some new wheels and tires put on. What we did for this truck is we were able to find a used pair of wheels, which were actually the same exact wheels that came on the truck. So we have a matching set. There's different types of winter tires. The ones that we really like are called studded winter tires. So they actually have little metal studs in the tire that give you extra grip in the ice. Another difference is these tires are a lot softer and they have what's called siphon in them. So they give you a lot better grip on icy roads. These tires will be on here for about half the year, so we're gonna get them put on. Well, here we go again, uh, more winter prep or maintenance. So we're working on the black Chandra. This is our older one. This is an O2. We've already done our oil change on it. I only change the oil in this truck like every 10 to 15,000 miles. And this truck has over 300,000 miles on it. So we did the oil change. We put our studded winter tires on this and we are gonna try to take care of something that has been a major problem in this truck for the last 10 years that we have owned it, and that is our headlights. These Tundras, for some reason, they just have like the worst headlights. You can't see anything with these things. And it's really important to be able to see, especially up here in Alaska at night, half of the year you have very short days. And I don't know what it is up here, but it just gets extremely dark. And there's hazards on the roads, just like everywhere else. But we have one main hazard up here, which is extremely dangerous. And that is moose. A big bull moose can weigh up to 1,600 pounds. So if you hit one, it can cause some major damage. We're going to be taking care of it today. We already have other lights on this truck. We have a light bar and some fog lights. Most vehicles you see up here, they'll have light bars for nighttime driving. But we're going to try something a little different. I've already got one light installed over here. And you can kind of see what it looks like. It is called a projector headlight. It is a whole different system that I'm putting here in the truck. New wiring, ballasts, bulbs, and the projectors themselves. The other bulbs, how they work, is you got your bulb in there, and then you have, I don't know what these pieces are called, but you have this piece here, and it goes in front of the bulb. And then you basically use the housing of like this back chrome area of the lens, and that kind of like reflects the light forward. And I feel like that's where this truck is just losing all of the light powder. So these new projectors, you just have a bulb that goes into that little projector and it just shoots the light straight out. We're gonna go ahead and work on this next one. Sounds kind of weird, but we're actually gonna be cooking this headlight. So I'm gonna get this unbolted and we're gonna bring it inside. We're gonna be baking this headlight in the oven at 300 degrees Fahrenheit for about eight minutes. And the reason we're doing that is we wanna get this lens off and there's some glue in here, heating it up softens up the glue and you pop this lens off, we'll be able to put our new light inside of here. It's getting soft. Since I've already done the other headlight, I know how this kind of works. Basically, I put it in there for about eight minutes eight to 10, and I start to pry it open. I'm using Ariel's little B tool, and I'm just prying the lens off, and you can tell it's getting a little soft and it's moving just a little bit. I'm gonna go around the whole thing and I'm gonna stick it back in there for another eight minutes, 
and then the whole thing should just pop right off. Oh yeah, look, it's coming apart. That is our new light in there. So what we're gonna do is the opposite. I'm gonna put this lens back on here, if I can. I'm gonna shove it back in there as much as I can. Then I'm gonna stick it in the oven for probably about five minutes, heat up that glue again, and we'll kind of clamp it back down together. We're gonna let it sit outside and, and dry and cool down, and then we're gonna head back over the truck and we're gonna work on the electrical. We're getting there though, it's gonna be awesome. Oh yeah, this is already. burn those wires. It's time to wire these lights in. They're not just like a plug and play. What I mean by that is you don't just take the old plug and plug it in them and they work. These lights are powerful. They each have their own ballast, which is right here. I have Oh, I mean, I have all kinds of wiring. Where is my wiring? It's somewhere, but it's like a whole wiring harness. So they hook into the battery. Each one of these lights has its own ground and then each light gets wired in. I'm gonna do that real quick. <laughs> left ones were what's going on it does look bright though i will say hopefully it's just a wiring issue why is this one not working what about high beams both of them change mm, here can i stand back for a second completed my light change no thanks eric thank you to eric for doing that uh we got those changed over and he didn't mention it but those have been a problem since oregon when i was commuting to work and they're gonna be so much better now i can already tell we've changed headlights out we've tried different bulbs nothing has worked so i think this was like the last solution for us it's really nice to have things buttoned up around here i think we're both kind of like finally can breathe because things are done we've got everything settled how it should be going into winter and it's definitely here it's snowing out and it's sticking around this time last thing we have to do is take this out on a test drive and see what the new lights look like